In the city of Watertown, crows are such a nuisance that every year the city hazes them. A wildlife rescue service uses pyrotechnics, lasers, air rifles to get the birds to leave the city and roost elsewhere. And this is a common thing in cities across the country. Just Google crow hazing. But get this. Across the North Country in Plattsburgh, people are dressing up like crows. They love crows and biking around the city. We join them on today's Story of the Day. Support for Story of the Day comes from Clarkson University, offering over 95 programs of study with campuses in the Hudson Valley, Central, and Northern New York. More at clarkson.edu. Hey, I'm David Summerstein. It's Friday, November 17th. First up, enrollment at New York State Universities and community colleges went up for the first time in a decade this past year. Some SUNY schools in the North Country grew too, but others are still shrinking. Lucy Grindon has more. Across the entire system, the total number of students only grew by 1.1 percent. But that marks the first time in a decade that the number of students has gone up instead of going down. Some SUNY schools in the North Country have grown as well. SUNY Potsdam saw enrollment jump by 3 percent, and SUNY Canton by 1.3 percent. Some of the SUNY system's community colleges in the North Country also grew. Enrollment increased at SUNY Adirondack in Glens Falls, North Country Community College in Saranac Lake, and Clinton Community College in Plattsburgh. But some North Country SUNY schools are still getting smaller, including SUNY Plattsburgh, Jefferson Community College in Watertown, and Herkimer College. Declining enrollment has been a major driver of financial problems at campuses statewide. SUNY Potsdam is facing a $9 million structural deficit. It's planning to cut at least nine degree programs. Jefferson Community College is in the middle of a process to downsize its staff to adjust to the new reality of a smaller student body. Lucy Grindon, North Country Public Radio. It's budgeting season for counties across the state. St. Lawrence County legislators are considering lowering the property tax rate to the lowest it's been since 1985. But at the same time, lawmakers are considering overriding the state's tax cap. Catherine Wheeler reports on how those things come together. St. Lawrence County is proposing some change-ups for its 2024 budget. The county wants to raise the budget to $296 million. That's about an 8% increase. The amount of taxes they need to collect for it exceeds the state's imposed tax cap. So County Administrator Ruth Doyle says she's asking county legislators to override it. That's not something I've ever done. Um, And the county, in the roughly 10 years that the tax cap's been in place, the county's only chosen to do that one other time. Doyle says there's a good reason. The county will maintain all of its services, despite inflation and the rising cost for state and federal mandates. Those are things like higher pay for attorneys assigned to people who can't afford one and the opioid treatment program. So St. Lawrence County legislators will have to pass a law overriding the tax cap before they can approve the budget. Legislature Chair David Forsyth says he's not concerned because the county's financial picture is good now. For me, it was always a perception, same with most of us here. And at the time, we never really had money to worry about these issues. But I agree now this year is the year to do it. One reason for the good finances, Doyle says, is that property values have gone up. We're seeing a number that we haven't seen in years past. That allows us to say, okay, in order to deliver the services we want to provide, that levy is going to grow because that's the difference between all of the revenue we receive and what our costs are. And Doyle says this means they can lower the property tax rate to its lowest level since 1985. For taxpayers, it would mean some savings. If you own a house with an assessed value of $100,000, the proposed property tax rate would save you $87. Another reason for the good financial picture, sales tax revenue is up and the county is giving more and more state and federal grants. But some legislators say they're worried about relying too much on that sales tax revenue. Legislator Harry Smithers. I share that concern about the optimism that you're putting out there for an increase in sales tax. And we don't know what sales tax is going to be until we get it. I'd be a little more cautious on the expectations of sales tax for 2024. But Doyle says they're budgeting for a lower sales tax revenue than what they're expecting to come in. 
Legislators are hoping to vote on the budget on December 4th. There will be two more budget review sessions open to the public before the end of November. Catherine Wheeler, North Country Public Radio in Canton. So one night in Plattsburgh recently, and this didn't have much to do with Halloween even, a bunch of people dressed up as crows, hopped on bikes, and became a murder cruising the city. Kara Chapman was there and has our story. It's a gloomy and starless night. I find Kimberly Cummins biking around the local farmer's market parking lot. (laughs) How's it going? I'm good. How are you? She's wearing a dark helmet and a black hoodie. It's got felt wings and wingtips attached. And then my bike is decorated with different lights that are like kind of sparkly because since I'm wearing a lot of black to try to look like a crow, I want to try to make myself as visible as possible at the same time. Cummins is the organizer of tonight's crow ride. It sounds just like what it is. A bunch of people dress up as crows, ride around, and make some noise. It's the first Plattsburgh has ever had. Cummins says she loves crows. They're clever, adaptable, ingenious, she says. And she's done a crow ride before, over in Burlington. It reminded me of, you know, like when you're a little kid and you're riding to your friend's house and you're kind of just goofing around and having a good time. And that's what she's hoping people get out of tonight's ride. I think we've gone through a lot lately and I I think this event has no real purpose except for just having fun with each other and I think sharing this community bond of doing this silly thing for no good reason, you know, like, and just for the the fun of it. Can I get your best caw? Oh, uh, caw! Caw! (laughs) Caw! That's fantastic. Thank you. (laughs) As we talk, the next crow shows up. You have life too! (laughs) Hey, fellow crow! Lauren Zito wears a black feathered masquerade mask and a black tracksuit. She says this kind of thing matches her vibe. She was drawn in by how mysterious it was. Mysterious, and there was no sort of overreaching, like, why are we doing this? And the answer was, like, because we can. And Zito also I says she needs to call it the night tonight. Her hometown is Lewiston, Maine, where 18 people died in a mass shooting last month. Like, no, tonight I need to come out, deck my bike out with whatever, and see what happens. So kind of calling for Lewiston in a way. Yes, yes. Zito says we can't live in fear. And as more crows wheel in, <laughs> the night, let us ride! It's easy to forget that fear. Laughter, whimsy, and joy take over. And even some non-human voices join in. Are those real crows? Yeah, I think so. Oh, nice. They're coming! Rylan McKay of Plattsburgh is here with her daughter, Evelyn. I'm wearing a uh, black bat hoodie, but I'm just saying it's a crow because it's the only cool winged thing I have. Rylan says this kind of thing is right up their alley. They used to go to Burning Man as a family when they lived on the West Coast. We love dressing up and having fun. Yeah, yeah. awesome. Soon, it's time for the safety talk. All right, my little crows, come on in! Cummins goes over the rules. Obey the stop signs, go slow, respect pedestrians and drivers. Then she leads her flock into the heart of downtown. One crow is on rollerblades and has these big black retractable wings. Andy Alger says it took about 12 hours to attach all the feathers. Yeah. But I'm hoping it looks like I'm flying when I actually skate. Yeah. <laughs> Alger merges with the murder as it rides past. <laughs> the crows make their way uptown towards SUNY Plattsburgh. By the time they wind around Hawkins Pond, they're about 40 strong. Oh, let's do a group photo. Cummins has them line up for a picture. Someone hands me a phone. Okay, woohoo! Awesome. Then Cummins gives the signal. All right, let's go, bro! And once again, they set off into the night. Kara Chapman, North Country Public Radio, Plattsburgh. Really great photos of the biking crows on our website, ncpr.org. More news there always through the weekend. Music today by the Wickmore Jazz Trio and Roan Yellowthorn, both of Plattsburgh. Have a great weekend. I'm David Summerstein, North Country Public Radio.